Welcome to Will It Build, the series where I take your builds from my YouTube comments and Discord server and put them to the test to see if they are the real deal. If it's solid, then I'll gift you 1,000 silver. And if it's really something special, you'll be featured in a dedicated build video for your submitted build. So comment yours below so we can answer the question, Will It Build? Will It Build episode 23, standing edition by the way. I want to give away another emblem in this episode as well. You guys have been seeming to really like those. Another Draconis Tetrachroma emblem. I think it's particularly pretty. We'll talk more later in the video about how to enter for that because uh, first I want to get into setting up the build for this episode from Lions. They say, so I threw this build together after watching a solo flawless with Karnsteins. I'm assuming they're talking about the new dungeon. So if this build can solo flawless the dungeon, I'm saying it must be pretty decent. They say it's very easy to keep up restoration times one and restoration times two, which is great because Warlock is actually the only class in the game anymore that is able to have restoration times two. The other two classes, Hunter and Titan, they have no way to get restoration times two anymore. So we see that the restoration buff, a times one restoration is 35 health a second, whereas times two is 50 health per second. I know that there's like some very niche exotics that can give you higher restoration. Like someone in my live Twitch chat right now just told me you can get resto times two with strongholds on Titan. But like generally speaking, through like a base subclass setup, Warlock's the only ones that can get times two restoration. For the subclass, they're saying we're starting with solar because well is OP. Go ahead and argue about that in the comments section. For aspects, they say it's totally up to you, but they run Icarus Dash and Touch of Flame. So I'll go ahead and throw on Icarus Dash and Touch of Flame because I like the mobility from Icarus Dash a lot. Touch of Flame, obviously very good for juicing up all of your grenades totally cool with that for our grenade they said run fusions because with touch of flame they're op <laughs> lines say a lot of stuff is op we got to be careful everyone knows that if you call someone op bungie will come knocking on your door and instantly nerf it and then the entire community blames you <laughs> fragments they're saying the ember of solace empyrean ashes and searing so we've gotten period on already, solar weapon or ability final blows extend the duration of restoration and radiant effects applied to you, which could be perfect if we're going to be setting up with the restoration times to build solace, ashes and searing. So we're going to go ahead and throw on solace. So radiant and restoration effects applied to you have increased duration. So this is always kind of weird to mix with something like the Ember of Empyrean because you don't really need increased duration if you're able to always stack them up with solar kills. Where this does help though is it gives you a little bit more wiggle room when you initially acquire the buff to start stacking it up a little bit with solar kills through Empyrean. So that is something to look out for. Might end up changing it as we get into, into it though. I'll let you guys know we want Ashes for more Scorch stacks applied to targets so we can get more frequent ignitions presumably. And then they also recommended the Ember of Searing. Defeating Scorch targets grants melee energy and creates a fire sprite which remember picking up a fire sprite will give you some grenade energy with that all set up the exotic they're setting us up with is the karnstein armlets which if i recall correctly are basically vampire gloves uh yeah it literally says vampires caress melee and finisher final blows instantly grant cure and provide restoration for a short duration so that's probably how we're going to get our initial restoration buff so that we can extend it and then we'll get into the mods for helmets harmonic siphon ashes to assets and heavy ammo finder it's ashes to assets heavy ammo finder harmonic siphon so right away it looks like if we want to run that we will not be able to do a four energy cost stat mod so we'll have to switch this up something like discipline so that we can put the harmonic siphon on the gloves, they have us with momentum transfer, harmonic loader, and impact induction. So we'll go ahead and throw those on. Impact induction, it's harmonic loader, only two energy cost. And then what was it? Momentum transfer. We're momentum transfer. I always kind of forget. Causing damage with a grenade reduces your melee cooldown. Gotcha. Go ahead and throw in our resilience mod right here. Get tier 10 resilience. Always love that. For chest, resists or reserves. Doesn't matter. I always like to go resists, so we'll kind of go... Do one of each, I guess. One of each usually my go-to. Usually works out fine. For the legs, we got recuperation, innervation, and the surge of our choice. So this is already really interesting to me because I feel like recuperation is a bit redundant in a build that is completely based on always having restoration times one and restoration times two. I feel like a boots mod that gives us healing when we pick up orbs is maybe a little bit unnecessary, but as always, make sure that we give it its due diligence. Innervation and the surge of our choice. So we go innervation. Since we have harmonic siphon for solar and harmonic loader for solar i guess we might as well go with solar surge because i'm assuming we're going to be using solar weapons and then for the class item we've got reaper bomber and powerful attraction so let's go ahead reaper powerful attraction bomber i already have all three of them on i'm noticing that they didn't recommend any class ability for us obviously on warlock you can have 
Phoenix Dive. You can have Empowering Rift, you can have Healing Rift. I'll just stick with Healing Rift for now. Maybe I might change that to Empowering Rift as we start getting into it because I have a feeling that if we have so much healing, Healing Rift might be a little bit redundant. Maybe we can go Empowering Rift for a little bit more damage. Maybe we can go Phoenix Dive for a little bit more, more mobility. We'll see what we end up. As far for the gameplay loop, they say get a melee kill with Celestial Fire from a safe distance, then keep Restoration up by getting kills with Sunshot or Zowley's Bane with Ember of Empyrean. Then with a finisher, it's easy, is easy to obtain. Hit the finisher. Okay, so a little bit of misreading on my part. I'm always down for a build that involves Sunshot, but I also want to try and pull the Zowley's Bane into our inventory so we can see how things are feeling with that. So let's come over here to Destiny Item Manager. Let's get our Sunshots. Let's get a uh, hand cannon I've been loving recently is the Apocal Integration. So I might even pull that over as well, just to mess around with a bit, have another option. And then I have my crafted Zally's Bane with explosive payload and incandescent. Well, they didn't really recommend any other weapons to us. So I'll start out with something like maybe a blinding grenade launcher, disorienting grenade launcher, a bunch of keeps changing stuff. And then we'll start out with the Zally's Bane like they recommend and maybe we can try to put our exotic in this slot. Maybe we'll go with something like Dragon's Breath so we can take advantage of the Ember of Ashes that we're running for more frequent Scorch stacks, or sorry, for double Scorch stacks, more frequent ignitions. We'll reload the Dragon's Breath a little bit more frequently. My fashion is not looking very vampiric, so I kind of want to change things up a little bit. That's got, that's got Dracula energy written all over it. Oh, one more thing. I forgot they said that we have to use Celestial Fire in the gameplay loop, so we do need to switch this over to Celestial Fire. Not 100% sure why they're guiding us towards Celestial Fire as opposed to sticking with Incinerator Stop. I know it has higher range, but it has significantly less damage and significantly less scorching and ignition potential. So that might end up getting changed. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll look into it. Uh, before we get started with the actual gameplay of the run, uh, I want RHF and Memnock to do their favorite emote for me. Uh, these are two individuals watching live on the stream, so thanks to them. If you guys want to watch these live and even participate in these runs of the coil with us, make sure you come live to the stream, twitch.tv slash MacDix. And speaking of the Traconis Tetrachroma emblem that I mentioned, if you guys want to enter in to be eligible to win that emblem, all you have to do is like this video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and comment down below and let me know what your favorite emote is in Destiny. It doesn't have to be favorite of all time, just one that you've been enjoying recently. I'm always curious to spruce up my emote game. Let me know what your favorite emote is right now down in the comments down below. Okay, let's hop in here. So melee kill, boom, restoration for 12 seconds. Okay, so we actually get restoration for a really long time. So that's pretty cool. And then anytime we get a solar kill, go ahead and juice it up by four seconds. That's thanks to the Ember of Empyrean. So basically all we have to do is melee kill an enemy and then get solar kills of any kind, thanks to the Ember of Empyrean, that'll go ahead and continue to stack up our restoration timer. And then we basically have permanent restoration. That's pretty simple because I know obviously there's other ways to get maximum restoration on a build, like you have some bracers, for example. It takes a lot more to get the loop going compared to something like this, where it's just melee an enemy and boom, you have the restoration buff. Does it work with a regular melee as well? It does. So it doesn't even have to be a powered melee. It can be literally any melee of any kind. And then they said get a finisher when you can. Oh, so when you get a finisher on an enemy, you get restoration times two. So now we permanently have restoration times two. As long as we're going to be getting solar kills on enemies, we'll extend that by four seconds every single time that we kill an enemy with solar. This guy is a mini boss tier enemy, so if we just get him weak and I can do a finisher on him. Never mind, that seems killed him too quickly. There we go, there's the finisher. 12 seconds, restoration times two. Which, if you're in restoration times two, you're borderline unkillable in Destiny. I mean, it is, you heal so much, it is so hard for enemies to kill you. And obviously, if you're in a situation where enemies are shooting at you, that also means you have enemies to shoot back at, enemies to kill, which means, hey, easy fuel to keep your restoration times two going. Just keep destroying these guys with all the explosions happening. While you have heat rises, you have to dive with Phoenix Dive, which will then give you your restoration times two buff, but you don't get it for that long. So you have to get kills on enemies immediately after you dive just to be able to extend the duration of that restoration buff and through Ember of Empyrean. And it's like, it's a sequence that definitely takes a little bit more, you know, experience and a bit more skill because you have to do it all in such a short window. Compared to something like Karn scenes, you literally just walk up to something and hit the melee button on them. And it's like, okay, cool. Now I have restoration. 
See you later. The Sunbracers build where I'm getting restoration through Heat Rises and Phoenix Dive. And even if you're in a situation where you can't get a finisher on an enemy, hey, all you got to do is throw your melee at something. You get restoration times one in the meantime. And then when an opportunity pre presents itself to be able to get a finisher on an enemy, then you can run up to them, get the finisher, and now you're up to times two. Look, these guys can't do anything to me. Let's go ahead and get another finisher, get our restoration times two back, because why not? It's just that easy. I love builds that are just easy to use. Like, I love build crafting in Destiny, um, but some of the more complex builds, I mean, like, you know, they take a lot of brain power. And sometimes I don't want to think while I'm playing Destiny. I just want to... I just want to be able to hit that guy like that, and then, boom, I get a full HP heal, and I have restoration for 12 seconds. Just can stay full HP with no effort whatsoever, and... If you're one of those individuals that wants to zone out and stay full HP no matter what whatsoever, super easily, like, this is the build for you. I will say initially after the first wave, I'm struggling to understand what the purpose of the Ember of Solace is in this build. Because it's saying that Radiant Restoration effects applied to us have increased duration, but I don't really know what that's giving to us because it seems like we get 12 seconds of restoration anyway, anytime we acquire it. So I kind of want to switch this over to something else. Maybe the Ember of Torches? Because although the Ember of Torches isn't super necessary in this season because of the artifact mods that we have, you got Flint Striker in this season where Rapid Solar Weapon Precision Hits and Rapid Solar Weapon Final Blows grant Radiant. You don't really need Ember of Torches, but I always like to try and set up builds so that they work always, forever and always, not just in a particular season. So, and, and I don't really feel like Solus is doing much for us anyway, so... You know, let's let's make that switch and see how this next wave happens, and then we'll reassess and reevaluate. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a disorienting grenade on these guys. I want to get my restoration buff back. Let's go ahead and melee a guy to get it. Maybe. There we go. Okay, so now we're only getting eight seconds of restoration when we go ahead and melee that guy to get the initial activation. I'm kind of okay with giving up four seconds of our initial buff timer by dropping Ember of Solace, because I feel like the difference between 12 seconds of the initial buff versus eight seconds of the initial buff is kind of inconsequential. I think eight seconds is plenty of time to go and find another enemy to kill to go ahead and extend that buff. I think that's plenty of wiggle room. I personally would much rather have something like torches in the build uh, to go ahead and make sure that uh, I have another way to easily acquire Radiant or just even be able to acquire Radiant in the first place if you're using this build outside of the Season of Wish. Season of Wish? Season of the Wish? Whatever. Um, but see, right here, like, boom, I'm, I'm, I'm at my max timers for my buffs again already. So Solus is just, it's not super impactful. Ooh, I think I just realized something. Hang on a second. So if I finish that guy, restoration times two for eight seconds. If I hop in the well. Interesting. If you exit a well of radiance while you have a restoration buff, I think it takes the restoration buff away from you. Let's go ahead. Let's shoot fire at that guy. And then I need to get another well available. Okay, so look, restoration for 12 seconds. Put the well down. Melee that guy, restoration, seven seconds. Let's go ahead and extend the duration of it just so we can be crystal clear. Restoration, five seconds. Yeah, so if you run into a Well of Radiance, your restoration buff goes away. Do me a favor, by the way, guys. Scroll down a little bit, hit those like and subscribe buttons if you didn't know that about restoration and Well of Radiance before watching this video. That's okay. Okay, restoration buff. Remember that we're, now that we're in a well, the restoration buff will go away when I exit the well, so I can't play too aggressively. But it's not going to hurt me too much. Got my disorienting grenade launcher, so I can go ahead and disorient this ward weaver so he can't ever shoot at me. I think disorienting grenade launchers are like one of the best. We get a finisher on this ward weaver. Boom, we get our restoration times two for eight seconds. And then we'll, we have some enemies right here that we can kill to extend that restoration times two duration. I'm just getting blasted by everything, but restoration time two is just like, no. Good to go. 
All right, now let's make good work of Dragon's Breath here. This is why I definitely wanted to try the Zali's Bane first, because it keeps our exotic slot open for something like Dragon's Breath, which is just so good in any build where you can run the Ember of Ashes, pretty much any solar build, because it makes the Squirt Stacks double. And, or sorry, not double. It increases the Squirt Stacks by 50% which means you're getting ignition procs much more frequently, which means the Dragon's Breath is getting auto-loaded much more. Good little fusion grenade over there. Fusion grenade with Touch of Flame is so good because every fusion grenade is basically two fusion grenades. And we'll hop over here, keep putting some bullets into this guy, and he's toast. Now, they did recommend a couple of different weapon options for this build, so I do want to switch off some stuff and experiment with some of the other things that they mentioned. Most notably, Sunshot, because I think Sunshot is always a really good time. Can switch over to our Hezen Vengeance, because we do have a Solar Surge on our boots, and throw Sunshot on in here. Go ahead and keep on the Partner Dust Disorienting Grenade Launcher. Another thing I want to change, I mentioned earlier in the video when I was looking at the mods, that I felt like the recuperation felt really weird because of how much healing this build already has. It seemed a little bit redundant. And after the first two pathways, I have not noticed recuperation having any effects on this whatsoever. So I am going to go ahead and drop the recuperation. And I think I might even be inclined to drop the Innervation as well to go ahead and take a second Solar Weapon Surge. That'll take all of my Solar Weapon damage from 10% up to 17% bonus damage whenever I'm Armor Charged, which is really nice. If you are able to sacrifice your 4 energy cost stat mod for a 3 cost one, you could then go ahead and slot Innervation back into the build. However, for me, uh, I think I'll be just fine without it, and I'm not willing to sacrifice Tier 10 Resilience to be able to do that. So let's give this a try with Sunshot, and let's give it a try with a double Solar Weapon Surge and get rid of that Recuperation. Let's make sure that we're still feeling okay in the healing department without the Recuperation. Apex Predator? Oh my god, I really forgot about Apex Predator. That would be a much better option than the Hezen Vengeance. Thank god I- thank god I have y'all watching this live. Oh no. Anyone who watches the Will of Build videos knows that this section is my arch nemesis. Let me get a finisher, restoration times two. Then I can just go ahead and kill everything. Yep, I'm not taking any damage anymore. Okay, let's chill in the well, because uh, why not? And let's get a melee off so we can get Radiant through the Ember of Torches. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, does being in a well take away Radiant? Kill this dude. Oh my god. The touch of flame solar grenades just on their own. So good. Alright, I know it sounds like sacrilege, but let's actually stop placing down wells of radiance. Uh, just to see how this build performs, you know, in a situation where maybe you don't have any wells on the fire team that are constantly getting placed down. Obviously, you, you yourself running this build will have a well pretty much at all times. Uh, but, yeah. Let's see how it works if, you know, maybe it's not up as frequently as you'd like. So we have our Radiant. I want to get a finisher on this Harpy so I can get my Restoration. Oh, that was a bit of a reach. There we go. And we need to get our Radiant buff back. Okay, let's go ahead and throw our melee. Get our finisher here. Now we have Radiant and Restoration. Now we'll just keep cooking these enemies. There's goblins everywhere. Um, I'm thinking too right now that I'm running this build, there might be one additional change that I want to make. So before we start this encounter, if you guys recall me talking about at the beginning of the video, I didn't exactly understand why they are recommending Celestial Fire over Incinerator Snap, because Incinerator Snap, is my understanding, does more damage, and I know for a fact does way more like scorching and burst damage for ignitions. I'm wondering if Incinerator Snap would feel better, because like, yes, we get a little bit less range, but it has a much higher chance of killing the enemy that we're throwing it at, which is kind of the point is kill the enemy with the melee so that we get restoration so might might 
switch that up a little bit. I just want to see. Let's see how it feels. See how they're because I I don't believe that there's anything to do with the exotic that requires you to use celestial fire. So it's just melee based. So let's let's go ahead and give this a go. Put the well down. I mean, any solar warlock build is automatically always going to be pretty awesome just because of the simple fact that you have a well of radiance available to you. Such a good super. Absolutely lasering this guy with a. Uh... Oh God. The boss is getting burnt. And this is wave number three. A little bit risky shooting a rocket there right as the detain is coming up. Yeah, that was weird. Oh, well. Another well. Oh, <laughs> oh well. Oh, I really hope my editor takes that part out. <laughs> that was... The only situation I can see Celestial Fire being a little bit more relevant is due to the fact that it does have much more range than Incinerator set. So if you're ever walking into an activity with this build and you're feeling like, you know, you're going to want to be playing very far away and you can use the extra range, then I totally could see a situation for Celestial Fire as long as you're getting the enemy weak. So like if I run up to these guys, hit them with a snap. My healing rift for Phoenix Dive for a quick immediate way to get a solar burst that will give me a quick cure to both myself and allies. I just feel like the sustained healing of healing rift doesn't really matter that much because the idea is that we have sustained healing through our Karnstein armlets always. So maybe even throw my grenade to butter him up a little bit. Nope, my grenade's too good. Okay, another thing too is even if we can't get a finisher on an enemy, we can always start by just getting a melee on an enemy. So boom, there's our radiant and restoration just from the regular melee kill, even if we can't get times two. We're still rolling with a pretty strong restoration buff, which is nice. And then, boom, there we go. Now we can get our finisher. There's our times two. And then this one is one that we can hopefully maintain perpetually. Should be easy. All we gotta do is kill enemies with solar. Should, uh... Sunshot makes that kind of not so hard. Throw a little grenade over here. Perfect. I'm hobbling around useless, doing nothing. I think this build pairs really nicely with the disorienting grenade launcher just for that reason. So it is definitely a we it is definitely a weapon I would highly recommend considering to run if you're running this build. Um, disorienting grenade launcher. Whoa. Get some rockets off. Everything's dead. Let's go ahead and get our snap off. Boom, restoration right there. Full HP heal. Because it lets you get close to enemies. Like these guys, for example, right here. Look, none of them can hit me anymore. Then I can run up, get melees, get finishers, all that jazz. Alrighty, final boss. Okay, start off, get a snap, get my restoration. Get some disorienting grenades on this Ward Weaver. Can't see me. And we run in for a finisher. Never mind. Got killed too quickly. Like I always say, if your problem is enemies event too quickly. Not really much of a problem, is it? Another situation, too, is remember, we have our Phoenix dive now, which we switch to. So if we do start taking a big burst of damage and we don't have a way to immediately get some healing going, you know, we just hit a dive real quick. Gives us cure. Quick little chunk of healing. Helps keep this nice and safe. Let's go ahead and throw a fusion grenade at this dude. Then I'll walk in. Finisher. Restoration times two. Perfect. Let's get some rocket sound on this guy. Pick our teammate up. Get another finisher. Get our restoration times two back. Perfect. And now we can kill the boss. Gonna go ahead and kill all these enemies so we can stack up our restoration times two buff for the Emperor of Empyrean. Also stacks up our Radiant. Rockets on this dude. Yeah, he's gonna teleport right next to me. This build does really good damage too because you have fusion grenades. Fusion grenades are obviously always awesome for damage. And with the solar weapon surges, 17% bonus feels really, really nice. Get that melee, get our restoration going again. It's not times two, but I mean, clearly it's doing the trick. 
Should have had a heavy brick somewhere. Well, this boss is getting smoked. This is probably one of the faster runs I've done. And I feel like I've taken like 10 minutes to like sit around and change stuff up and explain stuff about the build. All things considered, this, I mean, plowing through this. There we go, easy as that. So will it build? Absolutely. I mean, this works in lower end content with a little bit more care and a little bit more setup. It works in higher end content too. The Definitely the, the best part of this build is the fact that it's easy. There is no complicated, you know, equation in your brain that you have to go through. Like you have to go through with sun bracers, you know, say, okay, I got to eat a grenade. I have to make sure I have heat rises on. I have to make sure I Phoenix dive. And then I have a two second window, get some kills on enemies, Ember period extends, blah, blah, blah. No, it's just a melee an enemy or finish her an enemy. And then you're done. That's it. That's all you have to do. And then you, you get restoration, you burn me healing. That's it. That's really all you have to do. So if you're looking for a build that is easy to execute, and that is extremely powerful and potent in both low-end content and high-end content, this is definitely the one for you. Make sure you submit your build in my Discord server in the Will It Build channel, linked in the description below if you want a chance to have your build reviewed for a chance to win 1,000 silver here on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And as always, have a great day.